The use of respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is a requirement by law. It is a last defence to protect workers from breathing in harmful substances in the air where they work. However, a recent survey of 10,000 workers produced worrying statistics. 29% reported regularly having to breathe in dust or fumes when doing their job. Almost half of them identified the health risk could be reduced, but only a third of them were actually concerned. It's a frightening figure. 12,000 premature deaths last year. Is this a legacy of when people were ignorant of the hazards? Well, yes and no. Now we are aware of the hazards, yet still high numbers of workers are not fully protected. So the legacy is still with us. Only this time it is often due to ignorance about RPE. Getting RPE right is an employer's responsibility, but we can obviously help. I shouldn't need this to carry out an RPE inspection. You don't have to go in any hazardous areas. This is a foundry in my area, where they know they're trying to use RPE effectively to reduce exposure. It's a great location because they're using a variety of RPE and they're keen to receive any advice to ensure they're getting it right. Hello there. Good morning. My name's Michael Bowen. I'm an inspector from the Health and Safety Executive. If you'd like to sign in. Okay. In a business of this size, I would expect to be met by the site manager and whoever is responsible for health and safety on site. Both should have a good understanding of the RPE they are using. There may also be a specialist personal protective equipment manager, but the health and safety manager should be able to cover what they do. Today, only the health and safety manager, Sean, is on site. All the questions I ask here will be relevant at any location, big or small. Okay, Sean, like I said, what I would like to do is uh, just have a look at your RPE programme, yep. uh, specifically, and look at uh, what sort of RPE you're using. Um, what are the control measures you've looked at? Yep. Um, so, uh, what sort of RPE are you using? Um, we've got uh, disposable masks, half face masks, and then a air fed respirator. Right, okay. How many people roughly do you have wearing it? Uh, it's about 25, 30 people that wear it. And is that in three different areas, or, or is it for different tasks? Or? Yeah, it's three different tasks and areas that sort of need it. And which substances are you, are you sort of uh, controlling exposure to? Silica. Um, and then ferrous foundry particulate, mm -hmm. and then in the pattern making process, it's a sensitising resin. Okay. Did you carry out a cost assessment for each process, each substance? Uh, not cost assessments, we've got risk assessments. We and haven't the... actually then broken down each chemical to do a cost assessment. So you haven't got a cost assessment for the specific substances? No. Okay. Have you looked at other methods of exposure control? Uh, yeah, we've got LEV, but the LEV isn't adequate enough to um, provide protection. Have you got a copy of those papers? Yep. Other than that. Okay, excellent. Sean keeps annual LEV examination reports and personal uh, air monitoring control. records. Control These control establish control. the need yeah, for they, RPE. Uh, the LEV reports are sent work direct work to the maintenance team. Okay, do you find out about any work that needs to be carried out? Uh, no, it's all just completed by them. Okay. Sean should be following up to check the work has been completed. The results. Which of these areas From the personal applied? monitoring records, um, so I can the, see um, that there are high exposure levels in a number of areas. Crane operator. Um, you can see we've got high levels of foundry, first foundry particulate, and then high levels of lead as well. Okay. Where, where's the high levels of lead coming from? Generally coming from painted scrap being um, delivered from the scrap merchants. Since this has been done, we've actually uh, reduced the amount of lead levels that people are exposed to. And how have you done that? Um, by re removing the painted scrap, you removed yeah, all we've um, told all suppliers that we won't accept any painted scrap. Excellent. And when I conducted my own individual tests to see whether we've had an improvement since we've put that mandate in place, they've come back and shown that we have. Okay, excellent. Well, I think the best thing to do now is probably go into the foundry and have a look at where the guys are using RPE. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, fine. RPE should be the last line of defence and the company should take measures to reduce exposures by changing the process, substitution or improved ventilation before the adoption of RPE. Do all visitors have to wear this? Yep. 
you've reduced the lead by checking the scrap, but have you used substitution anywhere else? Yeah, we've um, substituted the catalyst in the core shot, which is an amine, yeah. and that's reduced our guys' exposure level from about three and a half to sub one. Are there any areas in the sort of foundry where you've looked at process change with regards to reducing exposures? Yeah, in the um, shot blast area this year we had a high level of silica, right. and we um, reviewed what we're doing with the process, and we've managed to actually reduce it by standardising the time the casting sit and wait before they're um, dispatched onto the belt. And that's reduced the level of yes. silica in the atmosphere? Yeah, it? reduced it by about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Excellent. OK, so you store your scrap here ready yeah, to go in the foundry, yeah? Yeah, all the scraps in there ready for melting. OK. And then, um, uh, if you look here, this is examples of some of the LED we've got on site. The levels okay. of dust are fairly high. Um, so you put the LED to it to extract from it and reduce the general dust in the atmosphere. And is this working effectively? Yeah, it works pretty well. Levels have reduced since the LED's gone in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're going to have a look somewhere else then? Yeah, let's go have okay. a look. So this is the normal pouring process, yeah? This yeah, this is the um, pouring process. So the ladle, the uh, furnace is about to pour a tonne and a half of metal into the ladle. Okay, okay. So on the subject of the RPE again, how have you actually selected the RPE you use? Um, we selected it by um, talking to our supplier, which is a local company, yep. asking them to provide us with examples of um, melt, uh, masks, and then we gave them to the staff, asked their opinions, got them to wear them, try them, and see what was happening. Okay. How long were the trials? Uh, about two weeks. Okay, great. What about fitting, maintenance, and all that sort of thing? Uh, we do face fit testing, that's all done by the nurse. Oh, right, okay. So, probably best if we go and have a chat with her and see what she has to say. Yeah, that would be great. When reviewing an employer's choice of mask, what you want to look for are the following. One, it offers the correct protection factor. Two, it is appropriate for the process. And three, it is suitable for the employee. In this company, at the supervision level, the management of RPE looks well organised. They have identified the hazard, they annually measure staff exposure for each process, reduced exposure, they have introduced substitution, process change and LEV, and selected the correct RPE, they follow an appropriate selection procedure. This is Judy, our occupational address. Judy, this is Michael. Hi, Hi Judy, nice Hello. to meet you. How are nice. you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. I'm sure you, you know why I'm here today. We're looking at um, the RPE programme in place in the company. Sean tells me that you're responsible for the fit testing of the RPE, is that right? That's correct, yes. And do all members of staff who use RPE undergo fit testing? Yes, they do. And what sort of fit testing do you carry out? Um, they, well, they initially have a, a DVD that's shown on the computer how to fit the test correctly. Uh huh. And then we have a 3M uh, face fit test. Okay, so it's all quantitative testing yes. you're doing, yeah? Okay. Do you do any sort of quantitative testing? Are you aware of quantitative testing? I'm aware of it, but no, we don't. Okay. Standards of face fit testing can be extremely poor. As an inspector, you should question the fit tester's competence. For example, answers that indicate training is limited to a DVD or manual, all employees pass the test with the same size of mask, or that employees passed with facial hair or stubble may suggest a lack of competence, and you should seek some independent verification of the quality of face fitting in the organisation. That's fine, you never and you didn't taste anything. That's good. Do you have any members of staff who wear more than one types of RPE? Yes. And are they face fit tested for all types? Yes. And with regards to test certificates for the um, fit testing, what happens to the records? Who keeps those? I keep those within their medical records. Okay. The certificate should correspond with the correct person and correct equipment. Always check the date of issue. And for a quantitative test, check that each element has been passed and that the pass numbers for each element tally with the final result. And what else do you go through when you're face fit testing them in terms of training? What else do you have to cover? Um, well, as I say, they're trained to put their masks on correctly and make sure that they are fitting correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and we do discuss the use of the disposable masks right. and how to dispose of those. Okay. And the disposable, what sort of FFP is that? Two. It's two. And is that for silica? Yes. Again, we would probably recommend that you went up to an FFP3 for silica, with obviously being a risk of silicosis just because we need to make sure that all the respirable particles are being captured in the mask. Yes. So what's your policy for people with facial hair stubble? Our policy is that they wouldn't have more than 24 hours uh, stubble because you won't get a, a true okay. fit. And everybody's aware of that who wears RPE? Yes. 
Try to ask several members of staff the same questions. If their answers are consistent, you can be confident that they are following a well-understood company policy rather than their own intuition. Heading across the foundry, I noticed two workers not wearing the masks correctly. I noticed the guys all wearing the RPE correctly. Yeah, or, um, you can't have a chat with one of the police. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right, Sean, um, your mask's not quite uh, being fitted properly. You need to make sure that the bottom strap's at the bottom and the top strap's up. So if you could change Sean that, also has to remind one about the company's policy on stubble. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that you're not allowed to have more than 24 hours stubble on your face when you're wearing a mask. So if you're on the knockout, you need to consider that in the future, yeah? Okay. Brilliant. I advise the company that for RPE to be effective, all workers should be clean shaven at the start of every shift. Got a half face respirator on there. Yes. Have you been face fitted for that? Yes. What sort of training did you get when you got shown how to put the mask on? Do you remember? We went through the training with Sean and the occupation uh, some powder. Put it in, push it in your face, yeah. make sure you've got the, uh, the right seal around it. And try where possible not to have uh, any stubble. Excellent, excellent. Where do you store your mask? In my drawer in my office. Can you show me? Yes, yeah, certainly, yeah. Thanks. Jamie wears glasses, so it is important that he wore them when face fitted. So where do you store your mask then, Jamie? Just in this drawer, just there. Okay, do you put it back there every time you finish with it? Yes, at the end of every shift. Okay. How often do you change the filters on your mask? Um, all depends on what sort we're melting up there and what sort of the conditions are, but generally once a week. Okay. Ideally, Jamie should routinely check his mask and keep a record which should include the name and address of the employer responsible for the RPE a description and any distinguishing features necessary to uniquely identify it, the date of examination and name of person carrying out the examination, the condition of equipment and any defects found, the state of the canister and filter. For powered or power assisted, the volume flow rate should be checked to see it is in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. What you should be checking for with half face masks. Has it been fit tested? Is it worn correctly? Is the wearer clean shaven? Has the wearer been trained how to put it on and how to check the seals? Is it properly stored and maintained? Is it in good condition? Filters, are they in place? The right ones and how often are they changed? When is the mask changed? Next, Sean takes me to meet Matt who wears a disposable mask. And do you go through any pre-use checks before you, before you use it? Uh, yeah, no. just make sure it uh, crumples in. Okay, excellent. Take it off if you want. Have you been face fitted for that mask? Yeah. And what do you wear that one for? Um, well, I carry this around with me all the time, so if I'm out in the foundry and get caught to another job in sure. a dusty area, I can okay. just quickly put this on. Do you wear any other masks ever? Um, yeah, I've got a half face mask. Okay. Have you been face fitted for that mask as yeah, well? Yeah. Okay. What you should be checking for with disposable masks. Has it been fit tested? Is it worn correctly? Is the wearer clean shaven? Has the wearer been trained how to put it on and how to check the seal? Is it properly stored? When is the mask changed? Before I go, I ask Matt about the comfort and fit. I also ask him about what training and maintenance advice he has received about the two masks he wears. The only training he received was at his face fit and no maintenance advice. Using an air-fed hood, Bob, the last employee I meet, gives a similar answer. What sort of training have you had that you can remember about the actual use of the RPE itself? To be honest, not a great deal. I was, I was shown how to use all the, do the resins by one of the other guys who used to do them before me. And what about the use of the RPE, the mask itself? There's just a booklet that came with it. And okay. And, and where's the airline you connect up to? Over just over right. here. Okay, yeah. Show me that. Right. So you've got a, you've got a belt. Belt yep. around my waist. Okay. And that tube. Yep. Just pushes on. It's filtered up there. It's filtered there. 
Okay. Sean, do you do air quality tests? Uh, no, we don't do any checks on the um, air quality of the compressors. You, you should be doing air quality checks every three months, really. But that's certainly something you need to start doing to check that the breathing air is suitable quality yeah. for the guys to take in. Does there anybody else help you out when you're doing the job? Do you have to communicate with anybody or talk with anybody? No, no one else is allowed in here when that's in use. Okay. The door's shut, there's a sign on the door. Okay. It says keep out, resin work in progress. Right. When that door's shut, they know not to come in here. What you should be checking for with air-fed RPE. Is it worn correctly? Has the wearer been trained how to put it on and how to use it? Is it properly stored and maintained? Is it in good condition? Is the air supply adequate and regularly tested? I also routinely ask anyone wearing RPE if they have any problems communicating, is the mask comfortable and does it feel effective? Does it feel okay there? Yep. At all levels, this company is seeing improvements in the use of RPE. Everyone has had a face fit. Staff get a choice of mask. Masks are being worn during cleaning and maintenance. They monitor that staff wear the correct RPE and have a disciplinary procedure for those not wearing it. Staff understand what their RPE is protecting them from and know when to get a new face fit. But there are definite areas for improvement that I discussed with Sean back in the office. Um, first of all, I think you need to carry out some task-specific cosh assessments. Quite a few employees actually didn't have the masks worn correctly. The yep. straps were in the wrong yep, position. Yep. Um, I think what that demonstrates is that you probably need to consider refresher training at yep. some stage. The other thing you need to cover in the training is aspects of maintenance of yep. the masks. Obviously, that came yep. across when we spoke to Judy. The masks, the disposable masks you're using are FFP2 which obviously we discussed, I think there should be FFP3. HSE guidance recommends FFP3 yeah. for control of exposure to silica. When we were discussing um, the air-fed RPE yeah. with Bob, uh, that you're not doing any air quality testing, yeah. uh, that needs to be done certainly. And maintenance carry out any work yeah. if anything needs to be done. I think from, from a checking point of view, I think you just need to make sure that work is being actioned. Yeah. I'm not sure how you can I finished the I'm conversation sure with some really general health and safety observations from my inspection. Yeah, we've got a um, project in place. Mm. It's really all about communication. If everybody understands the risks, the more able to look after themselves. So by asking the same questions of all the relevant people at different levels in the company, you can establish whether or not they're using RPE effectively. A visit as good as this is unlikely. You'll probably have to get a lot more involved, arranging a return visit, probably issuing notices. You may even consider showing this film. Do this and crippling illness, ruined retirements and premature death from workplace exposures can become a thing of the past.